there guys, thanks for tuning in. So recently I did a video on modafinil and that went down quite well. That's the real limitless pill, a nootropic designed to boost your brain power. So I thought I'd discuss another nootropic, uh, this time called Paracetam, which is possibly the most popular uh, nootropic that many people use. It's supposed to be completely safe and it's available um, off the shelf without prescription and marketed as things like Nutripil. So it actually is, this one's designed and allowed to be a, a nootropic. So let's have a look at whether it works and what I think about it from my experiences. So basically, Paracetam enhances your brain's ability to use a substance called acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter. It was the first neurotransmitter discovered, and it's used for your neurons communicating with each other, and has been implicated in memory. It's also been shown to do a number of other things to the brain. It seems to increase the oxygen consumption, which suggests that your brain is working extra hard somehow. It also apparently may improve the NMDA receptors, which has also been implicated in memory. But uh, it's not 100% fully understood what the mechanisms of action are, which you should always be a little bit wary of when you hear stuff like that, because you, know, you don't want to be ingesting stuff, you don't know how it works. Early tests have shown that there's no side effects, and many people find it very useful for improving their memory, as well as their reading comprehension, and uh, other people have had different effects they, they list, such as being more eloquent when they speak, etc. But unfortunately for a lot of other people, it doesn't work. Many people say there's been no effects, or if there are effects, they're very subtle. And brain fog and headaches seem to be common. So despite the official word being that there's no uh, side effects, that it's completely safe, it's non-toxic, so it won't hurt your liver, but it does seem that some people are having negative experiences uh, because of the brain fog and the headaches, and obviously that's not going to help you to be particularly more productive. In fact, it'll probably have the uh, adverse effect. And in fact, some people are saying that even after they stop taking um, Paracetam, they still have the same problem, so that's something to be a little bit wary of. When you take Paracetam, it's recommended that you also supplement with extra... Uh, Choline, um, that's the substance found in eggs, it's the precursor to acetylcholine. So your brain is using more acetylcholine, you need it to be able to uh, create more and have more available, which is why you give it the choline, otherwise you'll use it all up and that's one reason you get headaches. However, many people supplement with um, co extra choline and they still find they have headaches. So what about my experiences? Well, I had headaches and I had um, a bit of brain fog, so that wasn't great. Although I found that actually sometimes when I take choline I get headaches. Anyway, it's just on its own. I think maybe my brain has got excess choline. I tried to do a handstand and I nearly passed out uh, one time after supplementing with choline and I suspect that maybe I'm extra sensitive to it or something. I've got very low blood pressure, so maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. But this is the point. Like Different people have very different experiences. Everyone's brain chemistry is different. It's a very sensitive and delicate balance. The uh, different neurotransmitters and uh, hormones in your brain, you can't just run in there and change something and expect it not to have any consequences. So, uh, yeah, you need to be careful with that. And for me, it caused a slight headache. Did I have any positive effects? I did find that I was reading a book, um, The Four Hour Body, and I read it front to back in a really short space of time, which isn't something I can normally do. That was interesting. And I actually forgot I'd taken the track down that morning. Um, just sat down, read my book, and was like, wow, I've kind of read all of that. And I never do that. I'm really slow reading normally. And yeah, my attention to that information was maybe better. That was a subtle effect or skin reading and perhaps it was a little bit of a placebo, even though I thought I'd forgotten that I'd used it, I don't know. In terms of my writing as well, I found that maybe I was a bit more fluid in my writing and perhaps a little quicker. Though when I looked at the word count that I'd accomplished on those days, it wasn't much better. I tried all the different dosages, I tried uh, adding uh, choline or not adding choline as well, so it wasn't that I wasn't doing it right, I tried all the different uh, methods and didn't really, again, find any really strong uh, results, which is a shame because uh, enhanced reading and learning is something I'd be very interested in, particularly as a writer, but also because I think that perhaps changing our inner monologue and the way we think could be the secret to unlocking faster thinking and uh, you know, much better productivity and creativity as a result. I'm looking at a different way at the moment of boosting the speed of my internal monologue, and I'll get back to you on how that works soon, and that doesn't involve a new trope. In a way, taking a trip is a bit like taking steroids for bodybuilding. Yeah, sure, you might get rapid results, but you can also get negative side effects, such as erectile dysfunction in the case of steroids and uh, man boobs. And you've got to decide if it's worth it. And it's uh, overall, you might be boosting your strength, but your overall health is possibly uh, getting affected, and your body's ability to take care of itself to produce the right amounts of testosterone and regulate that could be getting affected. So it's a shortcut to, to um, a, a better destination, perhaps, but you lose something along the way. And in many ways, the journey is important part of that and uh, if you want to
long-term results are sustainable, and taking a shortcut isn't a great idea, you're going to end up dependent. There's a, a lot to be discussed on that matter. It's a philosophical question, uh, so maybe that's something we can have a little discussion about in the comments. There are a lot of people who love Rap Town, and they really rave about it, and I'm not sure if maybe some of this is to do with them wanting it to work. You know, it's kind of a placebo, but then a kind of cognitive dissonance that makes them want to uh, reinforce how well it works. It maybe to convince themselves in, in order to perhaps enhance the placebo effect. I don't know. My point is that I think some people are quite militant saying it's, it, it's really entropic, it's made me much more confident that I can speak and talk to anyone, and I think that might be what they want to be the case. It's not maybe actually the case. You know, in my experience and from the people I've spoken to, uh, personally, I don't think that those, but they're certainly not common effects, even if some people do genuinely experience them. That's not to say that placebos aren't worthwhile themselves. I mean, if it works, it works. It doesn't really matter how it works. I'm interested if there's a way you can knowingly placebo yourself, perhaps through some kind of uh, subliminal suggestion. I don't know. That's something that um, I am looking to in the future. I think would be very interesting. I think you placebo yourself into thinking you're super confident or into thinking that you couldn't look away from your screen when you're working. If you get so much more work done or you act so much more. There's an interesting Derry Brown documentary, I think, called Fear and Faith or something like that. And that's about the effect of placebos. And he gets these really shy um, guys and girls to kind of go up and stand up to bullies and break up bar fights and things like that. It really shows the potential power of placebos, which is something we should definitely look into. I'm very interested to see if placebos could potentially enhance uh, bodybuilding. Whether, because your, your hormone production is so tied into your mental state, I mean, if you think an arousing thought, you get physically aroused. Think of a present thought, you produce more cortisol, it's, it's that easy. If you can like, change what you're thinking, you can change your body chemistry. Could this affect your workout to such a degree? It's simply thinking you can take in, uh, something to get bigger muscles would actually help them to grow. That's something I would like to look into. I don't know if there's been any studies on it, but let me know if you know of any. Uh, this is a bit of a tangent, perhaps a rack time. Compared to modafinil, uh, there's really no comparison. Modafinil is a far more uh, potent uh, nootropic my experiences anyway, and from most people I've heard, but even then you're not going to suddenly, it's not like Limitless, there's no nootropic, unfortunately, that's like Limitless. Apparently the company behind the Daphnil are currently producing something that's supposed to be three times as powerful or something like that. I'm not sure that's even a great idea, you know, my thoughts on the Daphnil from the last video sounds rather dangerous to me, but hey, well, I'll probably look into it and let you know what I think of it when I personally, the, to me, the benefits overall don't seem to outweigh the potential negatives. Even if it's unlikely you're going to have a negative reaction, it's fairly high chance you're going to get brain fog and headaches and just have wasted your money. And uh, you don't really know what you're doing to your brain. So do I recommend it? Not, not highly, no. There's many different things you can do to uh, boost brain power a lot more safely. Things like extra sleep, extra exercise, brain training exercises, some of which I like, some of which I don't. We can go into that later. But uh, yeah, point is, you kind of, it's kind of like bashing a radio to fix it. You don't really, you know, it might work, but you don't really know what you're doing. And it's not technically uh, engineering, is it? It's the same with your brain. You don't want to be just poking around, adding different uh, compounds, not really knowing the uh, subtle effects they could be having on your brain. So for me, Paracetam, even though it's a relatively mild one, I'm not saying don't try it, it's supposed to be safe. But, you know, I'm not also going to give it a raving review because for me all it really did was cause slight headaches and other people seem to have the same uh, experience. My favourite nootropic for boosting memory and attention is a uh, good old cup of tea and that's a lot more delicious as well. So anyways, thanks for watching. Those are my thoughts on Fractam. If you've had different experiences, I'd love to hear from you, obviously, so let me know in the comments. I'll be discussing some of my other methods of boosting brain power subsequently on this channel, so stay tuned if you'd like to hear more about that. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.